Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. We are smack dab in the middle of day two of theCUBE's live coverage, HPE Discover 2024, live at the Venetian in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'm sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, John, uh, Dave Vellante, sorry. But <laughs> John Furrier was on here earlier, so Yeah, John's we're in the house. Here. Bob LaLiberté's in the house. Bob's, Rob Streche, so We got a big team, we got a big David team Linthicum, here. Yeah. Indeed we do. Well, let's in, in, in introduce our next guest for this segment. We have Simon Ewington, Worldwide Channel and Partner Ecosystem Leader at HPE, welcome. Hello. And Bob Panos, VP of Sales and Service at American Digital, welcome Bob. Hello, guys. thank you. I'm going to start with you, Bob. Why don't you tell us a little bit about American Digital. It's an advanced uh, IT solutions provider. Tell us a little bit more about the company. Certainly, uh, we are a Midwest-based IT solution provider. Uh, we focus on you know, Fortune 2000 customers, you know, managed services, uh, project services, have a focus on SAP, and then HPE technologies. We're, we we kind of view ourselves as HPE experts. We're fairly focused on HPE as a technology vendor, which is why the partnership is so very important to us. Well, and, and you guys have had a long-term partnership. So we've seen the transformation of within the ecosystem. Remember, it used to be, just sell a box. Yeah. And people made a lot of money selling boxes. A lot of, a lot of boats got bought you know, from the channel partners and it was great, it was a great business, but then it changed. Cloud changed things, people had to really rethink their business. They had to identify solutions. SAP was, was certainly yes. you know, a, a great opportunity because it's, you know, it's a complicated situation for a lot of customers. A lot of folks went into cybersecurity, uh, you know, VMware solutions were pretty hot for a while, so, so you guys had to make that transformation, and now we're in another era of transformations. How do you think about that? Well, I think uh, first and foremost, geez, why another transformation that we have to do before I have to retire? But you know, <laughs> uh, uh, but no, it's yeah, honestly there's opportunity there for us. So that's how we view it. You know, cloud ten. 15 years ago was an opportunity, uh, whether public, private, whatever, right? But you know, we view the, the current landscape as opportunity as for solution provider. That's what we need differentiators. You, you mentioned that, you know, uh, um, taking, you know, get, getting that expertise, you know, building that expertise around technology is super important. That, that's how we get differentiated. So you're not just a box pusher. So Simon, how do you how do you handle that when you, you mentioned just recently you were speaking on Monday yeah. to the partners? I mean, back then when we were talking about the cloud, you, you had to turn it into an opportunity, but at the same time there's 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 carrot and stick, right? You got to jump on board. Nobody wants to make change. Uh, now we're in a new era. What's the message to the ecosystem, to partners like these guys, um, to entice them, help them adopt AI in this new era? What are you telling them? Well, firstly, thanks for being here, yeah, because uh, it's my first time. Super excited to be on theCUBE. Um, and I want to say thanks to all the partners, because we had about uh, 1,500 partners on Monday at the Partner Growth Summit. And what we've been trying to do is to help partners evolve into new partner personas, because you rightly say, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you could put a partner in a specific box. You, you're a reseller, you're a managed service provider, you're a systems integrator. The reality is that Partners now have multiple personas, and what we've been trying to do is to help partners evolve at their own pace. And we started doing that with Partner Ready Vantage, uh, with the as a service journey, and we helped partners like American Digital to develop their own services practices, because that's where the margin is for many of the partners. And now we're trying to do the same with AI, because a lot of partners don't really understand how do they start that AI journey? Huge amount of hype, massive opportunity. But how do they tangibly take those first steps? And that's what we're now trying to do with the AI journey with our partner community. Am I correct, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that, that you will, you're pretty flexible in terms of the branding? Um, can American Digital white label that if they want to? Or is it hardcore, got to be the HPE brand? How do you guys handle that? I'm super flexible. I mean, one of the things that we noticed was we wanted to be different from other vendors. Um, and a lot of vendors want to protect their services revenue because that's where the margin is. What we wanted to do was to say, look, we want to take a different approach because we recognize that we can grow faster by enabling those 
partners to develop their own services capability, then we're more attractive as a vendor because they'll make more money working with HPE and then essentially we'll grow. So that's always been the plan um, and we're very flexible in terms of white labeling or labeling as HPE services as well. And so take us in, into sort of the current, you know, paint a picture of the services that are really driving growth for American Digital now and your, and your customers and I'd love to get more into the sort of AI discussion as well. Sure, so you know, for us it's, it's certain managed services, that's where it's at, right? And we HP it helps enable that with their GreenLake products, right? Um, and Simon mentioned, you know, uh, um, you know the, the various uh, you know areas that HP focuses on in, in around services. American Digital, you know, works tightly with the HP team to to uh, literally alongside their employees to learn about the new technology. So when HP does a training, our team does a training, and they invite us to do that training to enable us to deliver the service on our own paper if we need to, or want to, or we can deliver it on HPE paper, which is, you know, it's very flexible because we can use their IP. As a partner, you know, taking a step back, there's a partner out there that doesn't have the IP, they can go to HPE and utilize their IP. They've done the work, why, why reinvent the wheel? So, yeah. uh, and it's certainly for AI, it's a, it's a new kind of area for everyone, right? We're trying to figure out, you know, what are the solutions? What are the verticals? What, you know, how are we going to go to market? That's where HP comes in. They help us, they train us. And then, you know, we can go off on our own. We can go off with them, you know, in terms of our services. And, and, and that is where the profitability is. It's around services and the fact that HP invests in that training and helping us learn about those solutions is huge. That's, that's what, what brings us together. Uh, and I, I just want to add that, you know, it's, words are cheap, actions speak volumes, and I think what we've done with partners like American Digital is demonstrate by giving our IP, our tools, our methodologies that we use internally for our partners, and we're really saying, look, we really want you to develop those margin-rich practices, and we're giving you everything that we have because we view partners like American Digital, who we've worked with for 40 years now, as you know, part of our family. I mean, as an extension to HP, so they get everything that we have internally. And you are in a similar as-a-service transition, yeah. transitioning to ARR, kind of lockstep with what HPE is doing. We talk about it every quarter on the earnings calls. We hear, you know, Antonio provides the numbers. You're in a similar transition? Very much so. Uh, you know, the, the recurring revenue, I mean, it, it certainly helps the bottom line, right? It's predictable, unlike hardware, you know, sales can be sometimes unpredictable. Yeah. Add a pandemic into the mix, right? And you got supply chain issues, services are very predictable. So yes, we're moving that way. But the funny thing is, as we focus more on the recurring revenue, it, it continues to drag more hardware. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's really weird. So, but you know, we, we absolutely focus there, and then we know the other sales will come, right? That, but that is key. So Most you've got a flywheel ones. going. It's a little bit. <laughs> it's funny yeah. you should mention that. So I mean, it's the gift that keeps on giving, and one of the pieces of research that we launched on Monday on main stage was the Canalis multiplier, and they use a flywheel approach uh -huh. to demonstrate how we multiply the HPE dollars, so every dollar of HPE revenue that we drive through partners, can drive up to $4.90 of margin-rich partner services. Yes. I think you've proven that with your model. Oh, yeah, it's a, yeah, I mean, it's just a transformation for our business once we started to focus on that recurring revenue. What was the numbers? It was one to five, roughly? Yeah, basically one yeah. to five. One dollar of HPE revenue to five dollars of a margin rich partner revenue. Yeah. One of the things that Fidelma was on stage in the general session talking about is she said customers are, are worrying about the how, the, 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 the why and the what. It's our job as HPE to worry about the how. And I think that that was, that was something that, that was illuminating for me in terms of how HPE th thinks about helping its customers. I'm curious about your partnership and how you described it. Is there collaboration in terms of, here's what we're hearing from customers, here's, here's, here are their challenges that they're facing that then you funnel back as information to HPE in terms of d developing new products and services? Well, I can speak for us, I, you know, from, from our standpoint, the partnership we have is multi-layered. I have, you know, our reps, to HPE's reps, our technical people, to their technical people. We're certainly giving feedback and talking, and then I'm on the Enterprise Partner Advisory Council, you know, and uh, Paul Hunter and, and the executive team, and we get, 
the ear of Antonio occasionally, which is great. Um, and that is huge because you can give the feedback directly to the top. So HP, think of that. I mean, where, where a partner of yours is willing to listen you know, at all levels, so you can collaborate and give that real-time feedback. Well, real-time, you know, as quickly as you can in this business. But my point is, yes, they hear us at all levels. They take that feedback and they try to make themselves better. That's, and we see that, that's why we partner ex almost exclusively with HPE. My, my mother always said that you have been given two ears and one mouth, try to use them in that ratio. <laughs> and I think as, as a partner, we, we try to do that with, you know, all of our partner community. You know, we listen, we adapt. Uh, Vantage, when we launched it with the Zenith program, which you were part of, you know, we relied on the feedback from partners to incrementally change the program, make it better, and make it more relevant for the partner community. And again, we'll do that now with AI, with some of the exciting product announcements we've made, as well as the, 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 some of the journey that we're going to take our partners on in terms of enablement, the comprehensive enablement program we launched with NVIDIA. That's really about doing the same for AI as we did with our as a service portfolio. And I think last year we did about a billion dollars of as a service business with our partner community. So the approach works. Now we're going to replicate it for AI. So, sorry, a billion dollars, you said, with the, with the partner community? But, but you have a very large percentage of your revenue, HP's revenue, goes through the channel, does it not? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we're doing about uh, $12 billion through the channel. Um, and an additional around five billion dollars for HP uh, Ruby Networking, um, and the as a service business has scaled incredibly. So we've gone from zero, sort of three or four years ago, to a billion dollar business last year. Yeah, it's well over the half the revenue goes through the channel, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So innovation is really where it's at. I mean, we're here at a tech conference. These are the conversations that people are having on the main stage as well as in, in, in hallways and over lunch. How do, you, how do you keep your eyes on that innovation in terms of thinking about what, I mean, as you said, customers are all at different points in their journey in terms of where they are with AI. They, they want to start with AI. They know they can't, they want to move quickly, but yet there's also a tension in making sure that they are mindful and heeding the risks involved too. Mm -hmm. So how do you, in terms of working together, collaborating and partnering, keep your eyes on making sure that you are staying ahead and competitive and, and, and differentiating yourselves? Uh, I'm not start and then yeah, maybe you add. Um, I think the first thing is back to your point earlier about listening. I mean, you've got to listen to what's happening in the industry. You've got to listen to the partner community. You've got to listen to what the partner community actually needs from us. And I think what we're doing very pragmatically this week, both at the Partner Growth Summit and at Discover 2024, we've taken words and we're, we're moved them into action. So, you know, with the launch of PCAI, a tangible turnkey AI solution, the partners and customers who are not really sure how to get going, they now have a solution. The same with the enablement that we've brought to market with the partners. Um, it's again, it's how do we help them walk through that journey, irrespective of whether or not they're starting, you know, those first baby, baby steps they need to take, or whether or not they're more advanced, uh, like Mark III, who we had on stage with us on, uh, on Monday. So, Aruba Atmosphere is going on at this show. I think it's the first time you've combined the, the two events. Uh, 15,000 people here roughly, record for, for Discover. That's part of the reason, but the other part of the reason is a lot of momentum going on um, in, in the business. What do you think of the Juniper acquisition? I mean, HP has made some nice tuck-in acquisitions. Antonio's mm -hmm. been you know, very focused on accretive and you know, smaller wins. Now they're going for it. What do you, what do you make of the Juniper acquisition? Well, uh, that, that's more exciting than the, the AI stuff. You know, the AI stuff is still a little bit of a, you know, we'll call it a cloud, you know, you got to figure it out. Yeah. Juniper is like, uh, for us, very specific. You're, they're going after that data center networking market and that's an area where HP did not really have a lot of strength historically, and neither did we, because we literally you know, aligned ourselves to, to, to HP from a solutions perspective, right? So Juniper is one of the most exciting announcements that we've heard in a very long time, because I believe it opens up a huge market that we did not tap into historically. So, super excited. Yeah, it makes HPE much more, more competitive in that space, doubles basically the revenue. It does, yeah. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's interesting, what you're saying, Bob, about um, AI is a little cloudy, it's a little fuzzy, for sure. 
But one thing's not fuzzy is applying AI to networking, which is what Juniper does, yes. is something that is pretty tangible. Um, and, and you know, there's networking for AI, but there's AI for networking, and that latter is something that I think Juniper has an edge on. So, um, so you're excited about it in terms of just expanding your TAM. Is that going to? Yeah, I, I mean, for us, it, it, for us, it's all about customers, new customers and those customer relationships. That's the, I mean, my team, that's the hardest thing they have to do is to find a new customer. And if you have a, another technology area that can allow you to, to get access to more of those new customers, have a different conversation, a new entry point, because trust me, over 40 years, we've kind of you know, gone through the customers that had a propensity to buy HPE, right? So now you got a whole new market with, with Juniper. So again, very excited a because world. that is, I mean, for, again, for a partner, that is key. Those relationships are, are, are very sacred to us, right? We protect those. And uh, when you get one, you try to you try to make sure you keep it. So that this gives us access to those. So it's been 40 years, your, your partnership is now middle-aged. Uh, yes. <laughs> what, what's next? What's, what's, what's ahead for this collaboration? Well, uh, yeah, for, from, from my standpoint, we continue to double down with HP. They seem to be doing a lot of the right things, right? And so, you know, AI, hybrid IT, you know, networking with Aruba and Juniper. We're super excited, as I said before, and we continue to double down with them in terms of our investment and, you know, around services, managed services, training our people, hiring more people, you know, to go out and try to expand our market. So that's what we're doing. Um, and I it, we have a fantastic relationship in the American industry. You say 40 years is, I mean, it's amazing, you know, as a milestone. So thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you. Um, and we're going to continue to help American Digital innovate in the market. I mean, we're innovators at heart. I think that's what differentiates us in the marketplace. And we need to bring innovation so that we stay relevant as a vendor. And then we need to bring innovation for partners like American Digital so that they can take to market. And specifically on AI, we want to replicate the fantastic success we've had with the HP GreenLake Cloud Platform our as a service portfolio, and now help partners like American Digital replicate that for AI as well. You say you're hiring. What kind of folks are you hiring? Sales, technical, I mean, it literally, it's, it's, it, it, it goes hand in hand, right? Finding good salespeople is very tough because our, our company focuses on the customer relationship. You need to gain the trust of the, of the customer because they're not going to trust you with any of, the, of these other conversations until you can get there. You prove yourself. And finding people who can have that conversation, build a relationship, and gain that trust is, you know, very, it's not easy. So that's where we, we focus on trying to always looking for salespeople and then certainly technical people. That helps enable you know, the sale of the, of the uh, technology. So the, those two areas. I mean, almost like SE types is what you're Yeah, correct, pre-sales, yeah. pre-sales. Yeah, 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 and certainly engineers behind the scene, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. it kind of follows. Mm -hmm. Then you got to train them up to become the, your self-described HPE experts. That's right. Exactly. That's well, Bob right. and Simon, really a pleasure having you on. A great conversation. Thank, Thank you, you very both. much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Keep it right there on theCUBE for more of our live coverage of HPE Discover here in Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.